A multi-qualified, multi-talented, multi-faceted personality, she was first educated as a civil engineer. Since then, she has been educated in a multitude of fields and has built a reputation and career of inexorable rise, known for her outspoken views, strong personality, no-nonsense attitude, and taste for the elegant, she is now seen as Colombo's quintessential it girl, helping build and run Sri Lanka's most successful society magazine. ETV Power Women proudly presents Sharmali Tadawe. Um, now, you've heard the introduction to our next guest, and I have to say, she is one of my favorite people, um, so I'm incredibly excited to have her here today. Hi, Shamali, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Manoli. <laughs> I'm, I'm just as much as excited as you are to be here. Wonderful. So, Shamali, how did the phenomenon that is now high, how did it originate? How did you put it together? Where did it start from? <laughs> well, we actually... Um, thought about high in 1999. Right. And that was when Sujan Vijaywardhana, uh, a director of Vijay newspapers and Ranjit Vijaywardhana's son, mm. rang me and said he wanted to start a society magazine. Okay. And he was looking for a person who would um, be its editor. Yeah. And he's heard of me because I was, uh, by that time, writing for Femina India, yes, uh, right. which had a Sri Lankan edition and was sort of in charge of it. And uh, he said, um, uh, you know, he heard that I would make a very good society editor and I, of course, yeah. as usual, um, jumped to the challenge and said, yes, of course, uh, let's oh, meet up. It right, it was spot on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. So we had a couple of meetings and we were all like set to go in 2000. Yeah. Um, but the chap who was supposed to be our photo editor um, had a sudden heart attack right, and okay. we should sort of shelve the project for a couple of years till yeah. we all recovered from the shock. and you know, got going again. Yeah. And then in 2002 end, he said, we're ready to go, i ready to come in. Yeah. Um, so I said yes, even though I had started a, you know, my, my own business back uh, in 2001. Yeah. I said, no, I'm willing, and yeah. I, but I would work only half a day for you. <laughs> uh, so that's how I started and we had our first edition out in April 2003. Yeah, fantastic. And it's sort of grown and taken on this complete life of its own. When you started it, did you envisage the kind of success that you have today uh, with the magazine? I mean, you know. Thanks, Mino. <sighs> um, okay. I did think it would be a success. Yeah. Um, because I had seen that, um, I had seen how people react uh, when they read the fashion pages. Yeah. So I knew the minute that we um, started putting people, real people in the magazine yeah. rather than say stars. Yeah. But you know, we actually starring ourselves yeah. in the magazine. Yeah. I knew it was, uh, it was going to be a hit. hit. But even I didn't anticipate that it would take off all over the world like this. Yeah. I didn't. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, what you have done with the magazine. And you know, I mean, some people just think, okay, hi is just, gossip yeah, or fluff yeah. but it's it's not when you actually sit down to read it you know you've got some incredible articles in there a, a lot of which I've seen written by you um, <laughs> you know so you're well ac actually in the beginning the first four magazines I think other you know starting edge to the last dot I wrote yeah um, except I think Irushi wrote about you know, Pali Vijay Vardhana other than that, I wrote the entire magazine, including the captions, and this right. went on for a long, long time. Mm. And it's just, I think, uh, for the last couple of years only, like, I've, I've had help, yeah. and we use the Daily Mirror uh, freelance writers right, to right. write our articles, and I, I do the interviews like Shobha Day or yeah. Vijay Malaya, that sort of thing is, yeah. I think, you know, um, necessary for me, for, yeah. Yeah, yeah, necessary for me, and I love doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, been a, uh, it's been a lot of hard work, yeah. you know? You know, because everybody thinks that it's, you know, all Charmley has to do is attend parties, go to functions, blah, blah, blah. But there's so much more that actually goes into to yeah. putting a magazine together. Mm -hmm. so I know, I know everybody thinks, 
um, you know, I'm this Devil Bears Prada, <laughs> and I toss around my Well, you, know, you do handbags. wear Prada, darling. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do, but, but, but nonetheless, um, what happens is I have a very small team. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I have my original team that I started with in, back in 2000. So we have about 10 people who work for me. And it's only last year I got myself a permanent like a secretary. Okay, who, wow. You know, and um, we manage. Yeah. We, we, uh, we all work very hard. Yeah. And um, so it's not only going to functions. My day starts most probably at about 10 o'clock. Yeah. And we work till about 6 or 7. Yeah. And then I have to go and get changed and, and the, 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 the real work starts, <laughs> you know. So it's partying, no doubt, but yeah. it is work. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I've been with you on several occasions where I've just seen you getting mobbed. Literally, <laughs> for, you know, lack of a better expression, just getting mobbed by people demanding that they appear in the magazine. Mm -hmm. How do you handle situations like that how do you um, deal with things I'm so glad you like brought that. it up because yeah. you know um, I actually wrote my first high diaries column on that saying getting it straight yeah because you know from sometimes my I don't have to set an alarm because at seven o'clock in the morning yeah. my first call is from someone who says can you put my daughter's son for, you know oh. whatever, in the <sighs> magazine and I'm half awake and <laughs> you know trying to answer this politely yeah and I think over the last six years yeah I have learned how to handle it yeah in the beginning I used to get really stressed and at the end of the day by your 30th call of can you put my daughter in the <laughs> magazine uh, the wedding in the magazine gets really you know too yeah. hard to handle yeah but well I've learned to handle it and um, and you know it's impossible to put everybody's request yeah but we do try yeah and uh, one way we have um, uh, tried to uh, tried our best to sort of put everybody ev any somewhere yeah is to start I've started page three in, uh, the, in the daily papers, mirror yeah. which is one of our uh, sister papers yeah and so I do page three on Tuesday highlights on Wednesday page three on Thursday uh, on Friday I do something called high confidential yeah on Saturday I do another page three and on Friday I do a business fashion right so and uh, <sighs> you know we try to accommodate everybody who cannot go in the high yeah so we do try yeah you know and I mean again like you know you must get requests for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of different things and you have to be very selective about what goes in and what goes out that must be you know that must also take up a great deal of time because just going through yeah, you know, reams well, and reams of email requests, um, you know, requests, and then of course people just drop off invitations even at yeah. my house. Yeah, uh, my children get invitations in school. Uh, uh, now really? it's come to a point where really? my mother gets oh my <laughs> things dropped off at <laughs> home. Um, but um, I, I have to have a magazine that appeals to everybody. Yes. So at the moment. What I try to do is, as per the events, yeah. I have, say, maybe school graduations yeah. um, because it ensures, after all, it's a business, yeah. uh, 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 a, a sort of a whole range of readership because yeah. you have the children, you have their friends, you have their parents, yeah. you have their grandparents, you have, then they post it to the diaspora, yeah. all so, that, and then the weddings, yeah. and then, um, uh, then the events that come from the diaspora in the yeah. sense that uh, you know, the, the Royal Dance at Dorchester right. or the Thomian the Slama, uh, in, in New York or yeah. the Sri Lanka Medical Association Dance again in New York or LA or the yeah. Sri Lanka Foundation in LA. So it's, I mean, you know, the Sydney yeah. Foundation in you know, Australia or whatever. So we try to accommodate all that. None, I don't refuse a single diasporic uh, event. You know, event. I don't. Yeah. Because I think we owe it to them. Yeah. And the success of High mostly has been that the diaspora. Uh, you know, outside, yeah. uh, do read the magazine and... Because it keeps them in touch with what's happening yeah, here. Yeah, keeps them in touch with what's happening here. Yeah. As well as, say, the Thomians in London know what the Thomians in Sydney are, are doing, doing yeah. uh, what New York yeah. are doing, and vice versa. You know, it, it, it's amazing. Yeah, how sort of diverse it's become and how many sort of different yeah. facets it offers. And speaking of different facets, the High Book Club, I mean, that's just, you know, that's a wonderful idea. And I know it's kicked off and been very yeah, well received. Yeah, it's been, you know, for me, um, I grew up at a time when there was no television, yeah. so me and my brother, we used to just read and read and read. Yeah. And one thing what happened to me with the high was that I was so busy yeah. that for about a good four years, I couldn't do the thing I loved most, reading. Right, okay. So this year I thought, you know, 
now I think I, I, I need to do what I like. Yeah. I, I do tr like, love traveling and I travel a lot. Yeah. But this is something that keeps me, you know, really very happy. And I thought this year I do my book club and just sort of, you know, just started the book club and 50 people came for the first one. Which is fantastic. And everybody at the Hilton was running around trying to find more chairs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was shivering when I started, you know, and got up and sort of greeted everybody and said, welcome to the High Book Club, and yeah. I'm so happy. Now, mm -hmm. once a month, we do a Sri Lankan author, yeah. so we did Uprooted by Martin Vikramasinghe, okay. and that was a phenomenal success. Yeah. And then, then after that, I thought, okay, we do an author, say, yeah. say atonement we are doing. Uh, that's right, that's yeah, coming up. On Wednesday. And then um, we are doing And Rana Singer. Okay. We've already uh, done uh, The Sweet and Simple Kind by Yasmin Gunuratna. Okay. So, so I think we are onto something good. Yeah. And I know, I mean, I know it's been very well received. So it's, it's you know, it's another sort of as, as, aspect of oh, high that's taken off in a different direction. Very much. <laughs> but on that note, we're just going to take a little break, Shamali. Um, but don't go anywhere because we've got a lovely, fascinating Shamali that are with us. So we will see you right after this break. Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. We have with us um, the beautiful and very interesting um, editor of High Magazine, Shamli Zulawe. We've been having a wonderful chat, uh, actually, about the magazine. And I wanted to kind of ask you, you know, your last issue, um, where you had your soldier on the cover, I have to say, that was, for me, I think, one of the loveliest issues of High that I've seen. And it was very different because, you know, you're, you know, would you like to just tell us about yeah, how because that... I really want to talk about that because yeah. back in November, when Punerin fell in the sense that we took over Punerin, yeah. the Sri Lankan government, um, I, I happened to come across this picture of a soldier yeah. with his mates um, and he had all these bullets in front of him and he had this and they were laughing and they looked so free that, yeah. that one picture and it sort of you know got into me and I thought to myself if we win this war yeah. I put this man on the cover because okay. he was very outstanding among his friends also yeah. and bang in the middle and looking very much like a you know yeah. very strong soldier type so I had this in my mind and um, when actually May 19th happened and yeah, you know, our country was freed of terrorism, yeah. I told my secretary, I want this man found. And um, we traced the same photograph from the observer. Yeah. I cut it out and I went to meet Mrs. Sarat Fonseca, right, okay. um, uh, who is, I think, uh, was at that time the army head of Seva Vanita. Right. And she was extremely sweet. Yeah. And um, when I said, I have to find this boy, yeah. Um, her, uh, the staff took over this um, piece of paper I had with me. And two days later, I got a call saying, Madam, you're very lucky. He's alive. Because oh they didn't well, tell me, they didn't that, tell me that, that he a, might be dead. And yeah. I would have been devastated. Yeah. Um, so he said, Madam, you're very lucky. He's alive. And they organized um, all two. the OKs from the Ministry of Defense. Wow. And um, two weeks later, we got him down from Kilinochi. Yeah. I went to the commander camp. And uh, My it goodness. was, and yeah, he turned out to be, um, you know, a very lovely, ordinary village boy. Yeah. Um, from Galevela near Damulla, and uh, he didn't look fierce at all. <laughs> so I was very disappointed. I was thinking, what was going on? Uh, and uh, so during the shoot, we had to make him dress up again like yeah. a commando and put boot polish. Actually, it, it is was boot, boot polish. polish. So I told him look fierce, and he just wouldn't look fierce. <laughs> and in the end, his major was standing behind me, and he said. Um, you know, do your war cry or something to that effect okay. in Sinhalese. And he started running towards me from the trees yeah. and he said, Commando. And he completely just changed somebody else. Wow. And, you know, I told, I told Ravi, my photographer, I said, Ravi, just keep on shooting. Don't look at what you're shooting. Yeah. Shot, 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 shot. And we got that shot. And wow. I was very thrilled. No. So now it's now coming as a big poster in the, one of the army recruitment uh, things. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And it, was, yeah, it was just such a nice way to say thank you. Thank you. Because you I know? really badly yeah. wanted to say thank you. Yeah. And I want to say thank you to the people yeah. who have been actually taking the shots. For and all And who of actually us. died for us. Yeah. So that we, you and I can have this conversation. Absolutely. And my children can grow up in a free country. And yeah. I really want to say thank you. And it was just a wonderful yeah. way of doing it. It was a beautiful issue. But it's been, yeah. 
Which kind of leads me into to the next thing I wanted to ask you is about your column, Straight Talk. Because again, it is a, it's another way of saying thank you and really yeah. addressing issues that I think maybe some people are not bold enough to kind of step up to the plate yeah. and say, okay, well, we need to talk about this. And I mean, you're very bold. <laughs> Let's not beat around the bush. <laughs> you are. And, I mean, so, you know, just tell us a bit about how that kind of... Yeah, because what happened was... Um, I used to dry, uh, write this um, column called High Diaries on Fridays. And yeah. this was my travels, you know, going to Marrakesh, going yeah. and seeing the bullfights in Madrid. And, but what happened was in late December, yeah. uh, I went to see elephants in Mineria with Gehandi Silva Vijayaratna, right. who writes a column for us. Yeah. And our Jeep broke down on okay. the A9. And um, I, we, were, we got off the Jeep to do whatever it was find out what was wrong yeah and this little soldier he didn't look anything more than like 18 or 19 right um came across us and the gun was so big right and you know i looked at him and i really when he told me his age tears came to my eyes yeah. you know i i he was my son's age oh my goodness. and i felt really really bad yeah so when first of january came i wrote my first column for the yeah. year saying let this be the year yeah. I don't want this child dead. Yeah. You know? Enough. So I wrote yeah. that, but I never ever thought we'll have peace this year. Yeah. So after that, when we won the war, I wrote my first column again for the High Diaries after all this writing about plays and music and whatnot yeah. called Jaya Veva. Yeah. And after that, I wrote about five, six columns which were in so well received that Indian people started emailing it to me yeah. without realizing <laughs> I wrote it. And it went around the whole world and it's on all websites. I wrote my uh, Jaya Veva Api Vinueng Api and Letter to the Diaspora, which is yes, which know, please don't. Yeah. Please don't finance terrorism. Yeah. And I think what you said in that column just spoke to everyone. And I think it was something everyone was just dying to say. Yeah. But you know, didn't say. Didn't say. Yeah. You know, which was great. So and from that point onwards, we, Sujana and I had a chat and yeah. thought, okay, let me have my high diaries to do my, you know, plays and music yeah. again. But um, he said, in that case, you can have one of the main columns in the Daily Mirror. Yeah. So on Wednesday, I had my own column called Straight Talk, yeah. where I talked about, say, the, you know, the Museum of College Girls uh, yes, who committed the, suicide. Yeah. Um, then I wrote about the Angulana murders, yeah. you know. I mean, I think we should, um, now that I, have, I can call myself a journalist, yeah. earlier I didn't, yeah. uh, because I came from somewhere else and, and, and became this. the high editor. Yeah. But um, I think we do have a responsibility to, to voice the opinion of many people. Yeah. You know? And to, to voice it well. Voice it well, hopefully. <laughs> you know, yeah. which, which I think is a real kicker. <laughs> but um, no, but again, it's just lovely to see how you've started off somewhere and then you've kind of gone down all of these different roads. Yeah, I think the beauty of um, the High Magazine, yeah. and uh, especially Sujan, yeah. uh, who works very closely with me, is that, you know, we can sound out our ideas with each other and yeah. just run with whatever. Yeah. We just run with it. And when I said, I'm putting this soldier on the cover, I found him. He looked at me and he said, go for it, shall yeah. we? You know, and I shot it. And, you know, it, it is very different. And a lot of people, even my staff came and yeah. said, Madam, we never thought you put a soldier on, on the, the cover. cover. Yeah. But I said, to me, it's fairly obvious. Yeah. To me, I don't know. Maybe it's not obvious for everyone, but to me, it was unexpected. Soldier yeah. was going on the cover. Yeah. We won a war. Yeah. And we have to say thank you. Yeah. And what, what best way to say it? Yeah. A lot of people probably who don't know you and who maybe haven't read your straight talk, mm -hmm. you know, probably don't realize how educated you are. They probably think you fell into this kind of society, mm -hmm. you know, thing. Like but I mean, <laughs> yeah, you did fall into it, but you've yeah. done so much more. You know, you've got a degree in engineering, which when I first met you, I, you know, I thought, wow, how did she get from that? To yeah, this? well, what's a surprise to me? Um, okay, I had a father who did classics. Yeah. Um, he got a first class in classics. He was a civil servant, and uh, it is from him I actually get all my love for reading. Yeah. And you know, he used to read us Pali stories, Sanskrit stories when we were small, me and my brother. Yeah. Uh, the other one was not born, my brother at that time but um, and from my mother I get my mathematics so yeah. by the time it came to my O level and I had to choose between English literature and mathematics I think I was a bit lazy <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm you know maths doesn't mean that you have to study at all you know right. your maths okay. there's only one answer <laughs> so I did maths so I did you know pure maths applied maths 
physics, all that. Yeah. And um, so after A level, uh, four of us from my class went to University of Morocco to do engineering. Yeah. Uh, so that's how and I. And you would have been one of the few, you know. Yeah, there were only 13 girls in my batch wow. out of 150. Wow. And four of them came from, from your Saka. school. Yeah. yeah, from my school, from my class. Yeah. And uh, so we were one of the 30, you know, 13 girls in the batch. Um, so I did civil engineering. Yeah. And um, after that, when I got to the field, I worked for two years as an engineer. It was really um, not what you'd hoped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I'd become a banker, and I, uh, anyway, as me, you do, <laughs> yeah, as you do. I had started doing ICMA in yeah. my final year, and so I finished my uh, accountancy. And uh, in the middle of my accountancy, I applied to DFCC because they wanted multidisciplinary um, project officers. Yeah. And out of the ten, there were two women, and I was one of them. Wow. And uh, so that's how I started my banking career. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to have to just stop you there, then. We're going to come back to this because I find it fascinating how you've led all these different lives. But uh, we've got to take a little break. Um, but don't go anywhere because we've got more with the fabulous um, Charmin Zab. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. We're with the lovely Shamli. And uh, actually, during the break, we were having a wonderful laugh, but <laughs> I had no idea that, you know, you were a banker. <laughs> I mean, when did this happen? <laughs> um, I graduated in 82. Yeah. And um, late 84, Maxi Prady wanted, um, I said, multidisciplinary yeah. bankers. And he suddenly thought he must have engineers with accountancy. So right. that he found actually 10 of us. Uh, and um, so I was the youngest. Okay. And uh, I think the bank never saw anything like it before. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, after 30 years, I think they still talk about us. <laughs> That's what the new boss, Nihal Ponseca, tells me. Um, so it was a good um, three years. And I think it taught me a lot. Yeah. And we were in the small and I, I was working in the small and medium um, sector. And I met a lot of people who deserved loans. And, yeah. You know, it opens your eyes to many, many other things. Because I think doing engineering and mathematics yeah. makes you a bit um, myopic in your vision. Right. And this sort of opened me up. Yeah. And after that, I joined a um, NGO. Right. Where I did microfinance. Okay. And um, sort of traveled uh, sort of East Asia. Wow. Um, and that was also... A real eye, eye opener, yeah, I can imagine. Real eye opener, been. and it was mainly to do with like um, poor women, right? And sort of you give them like hundred dollars, and, and they will they... farm or do peanuts or whatever. Yeah. And you know they were very good at paying back, yeah. Rather than you know big, you know two hundred and fifty million dollars yeah. loan take. Well, right? Vanish. These people are very <laughs> very reliable, and and it it taught me, uh, especially well. Along with going to the University of Moratua, where I yeah. met a lot of people from all over the place. Yeah. Right? And who have remained my friends for the last 30 years. Yeah. And I think I'm one of the few batchmates who've gone to almost everyone's wedding. Right. Okay. You wow. know? Yeah. And so, I mean, these were good um, life experiences yeah. for me. You know, you haven't really told us about your time in Sydney, where, where, you, know, where you got your MBA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So after all that, and I got married, and yeah. um, uh, then my husband thought that we should um, uh, explore the possibility of, um, you know, going abroad and seeing how life there is. And yeah. so we went to Sydney, uh, because I think my, my brother is a doctor there. He's a right. cardiologist, and yeah. uh, so we had family. And then I said, okay, I would only trade in my Sri Lanka yeah. for... Australia if I could do my master's right. so then I did my master's MBA in Sydney Uni, yeah. and um, that was also another experience um, because going, ha having gone to university in Sri Lanka yeah. where you have hard benches no fans yeah. no nothing at okay. least 30 years ago at the university yeah. um, and then going to you know almost air-conditioned luxurious Luxury. <laughs> uh, lecture halls yeah. and like I was thinking really these people should be able to study <laughs> what are they lacking 
you know? <laughs> yeah, huh? no, it's a completely yeah, different environment. Really different. Uh, but I'm glad you brought up Amal, uh, because now tell us a bit about Amal and your children my, and my, how you yes. met. How did you meet Amal? Um, well, we had what you call an arranged marriage. Right. Um, but of course, being arranged, it means that we, we could get to know each other yeah. and then um, we both um, liked each other very much yeah. and I think we saw in each other very compatible things. Yeah. Um, uh, my mother always said I married someone like my father yeah. because he indulges me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and Which is what every girl needs. Yes, <laughs> and he's very supportive. Yeah. Actually, um, I don't think I would have got anywhere without him. Yeah. Honestly, Aww. because he's very, very supportive. He's very quiet. Yeah. And uh, for the thousand words I speak, he will say two. <laughs> but he's very supportive. And uh, he's been behind me all the way. Anything I do, he will say, fine, go. Yeah. You know? Which and is wonderful. And of course, I have two boys. Yeah. Um, uh, one's 20. And okay. he's at university. He's in second year. He's doing, uh, 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 we call it like, like a double degree. Okay. Uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. I would because expect nothing it. less from your son, <laughs> your child. Well, he, he likes his mathematics too. Okay. He badly wants to do engineering and yeah. I'm stopping from doing that. Okay. And then he said, oh, come on, mom. And then so he's doing Masters of Engineering simultaneously with a degree in commerce, which is like finance. Oh yeah, it's a finance degree. Yeah. Uh, and my second one just completed his O-levels. Okay. And uh, he wants to be a doctor, he says, like his like uncle. Like his uncle. uncle. Yeah. I've never been a mother uh, who sat with them and did their homework. Yeah. You know, I mean, I would always say, mom knows the mathematics. Yeah. If you have a problem, come yeah. ask me. And uh, you know, they would ask me you. as a matter of last resort. <laughs> oh, really? Because, yes, yes, <laughs> because especially Akila, he must really have his pride. Okay. And then he would only come and say, mom, you know, you can help. <laughs> and I would look at it and say, okay, right. You know? So, um, so I, would, I was never somebody who's, you know, going through their books every day or anything. Yeah. No, nothing of the sort. Sort of let... Give them I, space I like to them kind be, of find because, them. You know, you know so, I, I think a lot of people try to get them, uh, get their children to get the class prize in grade one, in grade right. two, and grade three. Yeah. There's absolutely no need. Yeah. They have to do their they go to university. Yeah. yeah. They got to have, you know, they got to have a childhood. Yeah. No, right? that's true. Yeah. So, I mean, I've let my kids be, and yeah. I think they've delivered. Well, I think if your mm -hmm. son is doing a double degree, I think, yeah, he's more than delivered. <laughs> So in between, you know, your family life and working, how do you find time for yourself? And apart from reading, what kind of oh. relaxes you? What do you enjoy? Yeah. Well, as a kid, I liked mathematics. I did a lot of maths. Yeah. To relax. To, you uh, did maths to relax. Yeah, okay. I loved it. I okay, honestly exactly. loved it. You know, it was very odd. Because there was no TV. Yeah. Then I used to read a lot of books um, yeah. before I started reading in English. Um, yeah. From about, I started reading English when I was eight years old. But till about 10, 12, I read Martin Vikram Singers and right, whatnot okay. in Singhalese and finished all the Singhalese wow. literature off. And by that time, I had to start off with In His Blightens Again okay. and go on. Uh. Right? But so reading takes up a lot of time. Yeah. Actually, however, like if, even if I come home at 12 o'clock or yeah. 2 a.m., I have to read for half an hour. Really? Before Every you day go to I sleep? Read. And I read about five books simultaneously. Wow. Depending, it's, well, depending on my mood. Okay. Right. So at the moment, I'm supposed to read Atonement. Yeah, I've done, for your book I've done <laughs> about two pages of that because I read it a long time ago. But I'm heavily into reading books about the war. Yeah. Uh, okay. Which keeps, my, keeps me very interested these days. And I have to have some facts for my articles as well. Yeah. So I do read that. Along with, uh, along with I read, uh, you know, a couple of, you know, I grab a Jane Austen and read a couple of Okay. Yeah. There's nothing like Austen. There, there you know, is nothing, I read, like, nothing Austen. like Austen. So I read that. <laughs> and... Uh, I have three rooms full of bookcases. Okay. So I go in and try to pick up one and, you know, um, read a bit from somewhere. Yeah. Because I've read all these books. Okay. Right? So and it's, you know, it keeps me going. Um, what else do I do? I travel a lot. Yeah. Every time the mag finishes, I sort of take a flight. Yeah. So I've traveled a lot the last six years. Yeah. Last trip was to the Kruger. Okay. Yeah, and that wow. was nice. Yes. Uh, yeah, you were also. Right? <laughs> but we didn't run into <laughs> yeah, each other, tada. unfortunately. <laughs> Only <should> the animals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I like to travel. I, yeah. I, I like to travel. Marrakesh was a lovely location. Yeah. Then I uh, went to Bilbao because I want to see all the Guggenheims. That yeah. was the only Guggenheim I haven't seen. Right. Did that. And um, like, you know, if I like a, uh, an artist, I would like to go to that country to see that and have his work, you know. And, you know, go to the opera, go to, go to the theatre, go see Broadway. I love me 
New York. I love Manhattan. Yeah. And I just walk around there. I mean, yeah. I don't go shopping the whole day. Yeah. Just I, kind of absorb just relax. all yeah. of the... Yeah. yeah. Just relax. It okay. relaxes me to travel. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. We've got to take another little break, mm -hmm. um, but we're going to be right back very soon with something that we like to call um, the confession cam, oh, right. uh, where we've spoken to a couple of your mm -hmm. friends and uh, it's what they have to say about you. So don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back after this break. Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Um, we're having a chat with the editor of Hi, the charming Sharmali, and um, we're actually just going to show her uh, what we like to call the confession cam, where we've Gosh. roped together, you know, <clears throat> a few of your friends, and, and we've said, you know, now dish the dirt, what she really like. Gosh. So, but it's all, it's all very, very nice. So let's let's take a quick look at what they have to say about you. <laughs> I are two people I know who have changed avatars quite a lot in the years, in the last 10, 12 years. Before she became this kind of personality. And in my case too, when I was just a human being, before I became a writer within inverted commas. You know, so it's quite interesting how people change. Um, and in Shamali's case, I, I actually wrote a, wrote a story in, 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 in this book about her. Um, and when I wrote it, I was quite nervous because it's quite obvious that it's about her. So I gave her a copy. I sort of, you know, before it came out in print, I, I sort of shoved the, the, the paper under her door. And she called me back within 10 minutes and said, I love it, she said, I really love it. But one criticism, it's not wicked enough. I'm much more wicked in real life than this. Well, the truth is actually she's not. She's a very nice person, although she loves this persona of wickedness. Quite a lot of other people like to see this very, very wicked, very kind of ballsy person and she's a ballsy person but I don't think she's wicked I think she's actually a very kind person you know and quite an honest a very honest person who, who has his opinions but when I think the public perception is different is that the public perceive her as I don't know whatever you like to, to call it you know uh, wicked witch of the east or whatever but actually she's not at all like that the other thing I could say about Shamali is that um, there are very few people who have either the courage or the integrity to put themselves out in the public domain and not be afraid and not have to backtrack or prevaricate or have said, sort of say one thing in public and one thing in private. One of those very few people, what you see is what you get. So you may not always agree with her opinions in her articles or columns or what she says, but you have to admire the integrity. Academically, which is I suppose something very few people know about. Yeah, she's concerned, you know, you think of her as the editor of the High magazine and uh, it's all social. But what people don't really know is the academic side of her. That she was actually one of the most brilliant girls in our, in our form. And when it came to the A-levels, I mean, you take the island best results, she would have been in the first 20. Right? And uh, so when in the O-levels, the interesting thing was I think her mother wanted her to do the bio subjects, but she had other ideas. And on her own, she went and picked the maths subjects because that's what she wanted to do. So you can get a, some kind of idea that even at that time, she knew exactly what she wanted to do and did it. The other thing is, to me, she's not Shamali. She was Chinta in school. She was Chinta Prema Vardhana, you see. And uh, it's, uh, I still, that's, that's exactly what I call her. Um, she was uh, full of fun. And uh, more than that, I mean, she was, uh, she was a live wire and would take the lead in just about anything. And, uh, but where her close friends were concerned, I think you can't find a better pal than her. The kind of person who stand by you, whatever happens. Well, I knew, I known Shamali intimately for about two years, when um, Cotton Collection chose Shamali as their brand ambassador for the women campaign. And um, we were looking for women of substance. We were looking for strong, intelligent, dynamic women women who had a zest for life and women who were very simply comfortable in their own skin and Shamali kind of fitted the mold and we chose her as a result. Personally I think Shamali is a walking revolution. She juggles so many things at so many times and I never cease to admire the way she does it. She's dynamic, she's always on the go and she never seems to tire and she seems to enjoy every minute of it. And, but I must say, despite all that, Shamani always has the time to help a friend 
always has the time to help out in any way possible. Um, she's also a no-nonsense type of person and totally impatient and doesn't suffer fools gladly. And one more thing that I think Shamali will totally agree with me is modesty is not her best virtue. <laughs> <laughs> How true. <laughs> I think they got you spot, spot on. on. And I mean, you know, very, very sort of heartfelt sort of stuff, I think. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, I'm so pleased. Touched. <laughs> <laughs> I love the last line. <laughs> but yeah, so. I think, I think three of them spoke in three different angles and I think yeah, yeah they, they got me in different yeah. they, got, they got me yeah, yeah which is, yeah, which which is, is so nice. sweet yeah <laughs> oh good I'm glad you like that because yeah. if I think just by listening to what they have to say I think it was no real surprise when you got your Zonta uh, achievement you know for yeah. I, you know just tell us a little bit about that and how did you feel actually yeah, when you um, heard that you were gonna you get know, this because award? I think the high magazine um, is a one-of-a-kind magazine yeah. and before before the high magazine there was nothing yeah. like that and it um, it's I think that's part of a success as well yeah but I think there were a lot of people who really didn't think think of it as journalism right okay and um, but I think when um, we apply we had to give our yeah. uh, data for the award um, uh, Later on, so many people came and said, Shamali, there was, it was a no-brainer. Yeah. You know, because this has done, gone and done many things never done before. Yeah. And for me, the High Magazine is not only a society magazine, yeah. it's, it's a magazine that I promote my country with. Yeah. Because we had war for such a long time. Yeah. But we showed that the country still rocked. Yeah. That, and you know, we... There were things happening. There were people things happening. Were, yeah. Everyday things are happening. Yeah. War, no war. Yeah. It's a happening place, <laughs> right? And I showed that. Yeah. And, and therefore convinced a lot of people to come back home for holidays, saying, yeah. oh, you guys have such a lot of fun. Yeah. Right? And if they think every day is a party. And actually, in, in, in Colombo... It is. Uh, it is. <laughs> right? So, um, so I'm, I'm very grateful that I, that I won the award because yeah. it sort of um, affirmed to me that I have done the You've right done thing. done this, yeah. You've done yes. something. Great. Well, we're going to take another little break, but yeah. don't go anywhere because we're going to come back with the dreaded tan, which are not as dreaded oh, as okay. everyone thinks right. they are. <laughs> um, it's brought to us by Pond's Age Miracle, the lovely people at Pond's Age Miracle. Um, just rapid questions that I'm going to ask you, but we're going to do that after we take this little break, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Um, if you've just tuned in, you've caught it in time because I'm about to ask Shamli the dreaded 10. <laughs> yeah. Take a deep breath. <laughs> I'm ready. Relax yourself and get ready for it. Okay. First question. Uh, which character from any TV show would you like to be if you could be any character from a TV show? Kill Bill. Really? You'd like to be from Kill Bill? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uma Thurman in Kill Bill. <laughs> okay. Alrighty then. <laughs> I'm just going to move back a little bit after <laughs> that answer. Because <laughs> it's super fun. Okay, well, uh, if a film were made of your life, who would play the lead role? Ah, oh, Jesus. Yeah. That's a toughie. That's a toughie? Okay, That's we, can, a toughie. we can come back to that Maybe one. Madonna. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. That's an interesting yeah. choice. <laughs> um, do you want to be a big fish in a small pond or a small fish in a big pond? Latter, please. Yeah. Cool. Um, what's your greatest weakness? I used to get angry. Yeah. But not anymore. Yeah, you kind of... Because I've mellowed. I've mellowed. Yeah. That used to be my greatest weakness. Yeah. Uh, but my anger never lasts long. Yeah. <laughs> Tuck. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know about that. <laughs> I'm exactly the same. Um, what's been the worst day of your life? The day uh, I heard my father had cancer. Nothing can beat that. Yeah. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Oh, I like what I am. <laughs> okay, good answer. We're not... Okay, nothing. You would change nothing. All right, fair enough. How many times have you been in love? Mm. 
Oh, about twice. <laughs> Five times with Amal. <laughs> uh, if you could travel anywhere in time, where would you go? So you can go backwards, you can go forwards. Is there any period that you would like to? I would like to go forwards, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Go and see what the world would be in the future. Yeah. Because so many things are happening, like the ice is melting faster than I yeah. expected, right? Yeah. So what we thought would be the next even 20 years may, may not, not be the next yeah. 20 years. So definitely. Which is scary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you wish that you had invented? If there was anything that you could invent? Or what that's been invented? Cancer. Yeah, a cure for cancer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the last question is if a spaceship landed outside right now, um, would you get in it, first of all? And if you did get in it, where would you ask it to take you? First answer is absolutely, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Anything unexpected I would do. And what was the second part? Uh, where would you go in it? Where would you ask them to take you? Not the moon, because it's already been done. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> Someone's already been photographed yeah, there. that's right, yeah. Far away in the universe. Yeah, that's okay. it. Right, well, you know, thank you so much to Pond's Age Miracle for the dreaded 10. Mm -hmm. uh, you have them to thank for these yeah, questions. Okay, right. Thank you, Pond. <laughs> but uh, thank you, Shamli. Thanks so much for, for agreeing to come on this. I've had a really good time. <laughs> and especially the bits that you missed between, you know, when we were in the breaks, I think were the best. Um, so thank you so much for being thank here. You, thank you, Mino. Thank you for having me. It's been a, a pleasure. It's been fun. It's been really fun. good fun. And I, I was thrilled when I heard that you had said yes and you were coming on. So. Um, but for all of you at home, we'll see you again next week.